And and Tony Khan is right now the primary employer in the wrestling industry of wrestlers that are followed for the same reason that they like people who eat dog poop. Because it's just a freak show and a, and, a, and a goof on everything. You know, as a matter of fact, <laughs> was that your question, Brian? I guess Is that so. the answer to your question? I get, do you think there'll be any other releases anytime soon? Well, if he smartens up and realizes it, that... You know, here's another thing. Oh, my God. I just read this. Remember, we kept talking about why the fuck is that Michael knock a knock a knock it the fuck off and get off my television with his baby oil routine uh, actually wrestling for a, the, the supposed number two national wrestling company when he's a fucking joke wrestler from an outlaw fucking company in Japan? Oh, I knew the answer. It's because well, he's well, Omega's the, buddy. He's Omega's buddy. No, no, he's not. He's Omega's ex- assistant. He what? is actually, they don't, no, they're not just booking him as a wrestler. That's his side light. That's his, that's his, what do they call it? A side hustle? They act since an executive vice president needs an assistant. They hired to be the assistant of an executive vice president of the number two wrestling promotion in the United States of America. They hired a fucking, outlaw fuck from an indie group in Japan just because he's friends with that same executive vice president and also found out guess how old he is he is well preserved for his age 45 fucking years old a 45 year old outlaw wrestler from Japan with no other pro wrestling experience whatsoever is the assistant to the executive vice president of the second largest company in the United States who has no previous pro wrestling experience either. Um, got to give yeah. them credit. They all got their friends jobs to quote Jim Hurd. I haven't seen this sort of loyalty since Korea. Since Korea. Yes. Michael Naka 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 to fuck off is the assistant to the executive vice president, Kenny Olivier in a, and he just, so because there was a article saying, well, he knows in 10 years, he won't be wrestling, which Olivier did give us hope. Also, Kenny Olivier was quoted said in 10 years, I certainly won't be wrestling. I've even though I will be just South of 70 at that point, And it'll be the best 10 years of my golden years. I'd give them up tomorrow if he was out of the fucking business. But anyway, I did get a, an email. From one of the Cult of Cornet members. What, what the hell? Hello, Kenny Omega's office. <laughs> <laughs> His assistant. I'm sorry, I had to do it. I had to do it. <laughs> oh, Rio, hold on. I'll get Kenny Rio. On the phone. <laughs> Rio. What? What? Kenny, it's Rio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I needed that. No, we said we were going to be silly today, and we and we are. Uh, because the, I have this email though that's pertinent to the subject matter that we were just discussing. Hello, Jim. Hope all is well. I like a lot of folk. Am an avid listener of the experience in the drive-through, and like how you tell it like it is. One thing I have to respectfully disagree with you on is the comparison of AEW to backyard wrestling. I guess you could say I'm an expert on backyard wrestling as I ran my own deal for years. When we did it, we worked old school style, except you really had to win. We didn't go predetermined until later. When I finally did get the chance to train for real, it was a real culture shock. I realized that none of us had any real clue of what was going on and more so the amount of work it took to really know what you were doing. That's when I understood why a legitimate pro wrestler looks down on backyard wrestling. These guys coming in from bullshit renegade indie mud shows are no different to me than what I was. Untrained, reckless, playing around, no clue why this works and that doesn't. Except the only difference is I wanted away from the playing and into the real deal, whereas they want to bring in the playing because they can't handle the real deal. AEW is backyard wrestling with a budget, because everything they do, we did 25 years ago and probably did some of it more safely. 
Sorry for my long-winded rant. Just thought I would give you a different perspective. Well, there you have it. It seems like that you would think that these guys, instead of continuing to play in their garage, would want to get signed by a record label and put out quality music. But instead, they still want to fucking play in the backyard, and they just want to bring the backyard to... Well, I guess they never left the backyard. Didn't, didn't the... The the Bucks, uh, his, uh, Road Warrior Buck and his brother Balding, actually have a match with each other in their backyard like this fucking spring. I heard put it on it. YouTube. Yeah, I heard about it. I can't. I don't know how anyone watches that garbage they call a YouTube show. I tried once, and I'm not into bad humor, let alone bad wrestling humor. So I didn't. I didn't see it. Well, you I got what now? It. There you. Well, there's something for everybody there. You got bad wrestling, bad humor, and bad wrestling humor. Yeah, on their YouTube program, and it went. <laughs> You know, Chris the Jericho Bucks is the get- Jack Benny of bad wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it, it, it seems like, I don't know, at some point, when, when do the young, young bucks become the older bucks, the aging bucks, the middle-aged bucks, the senior bucks, the, the over the hill bucks? What, because... I mean, Father Time is catching up, and neither one of them are Ricky Morton. I mean, you've already got Balding Buck. We've mentioned this. His hair in the back, it looks like Shawn Michaels. In the front, it looks like Steve Austin, his hair. (laughs) So, uh, you know, I'm just wondering when they have to quit playing in the backyard. And, and, And is it, is it also, is it too late? Is it too late, you think, for Balding Buck? Because we know somebody that might could help Balding Buck. I don't know, maybe too late for him. The folks at Keeps. You know what I was talking about. We've talked about the folks at Keeps before. That's right. Um, we get into our 20s and 30s. That's when you start noticing the first signs of hair loss. That was a long time ago for me. But there's a way, simple and easy, instead of worrying, because I was on, on top, I'm a little thin now. I don't know if I caught it in time. But two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time that they're 35. And the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have the hair left. Do not call the fire department after the house has already burned down. Now you don't have to go to the doctor's office for a prescription. Get around all the people riddled with plague and pandemic. You can visit a doctor online, get hair loss medication delivered right to your door. They make it easy. They deliver it every three months. You can say goodbye to the pharmacy checkout lines. And Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there. So you may have tried them before, but never for this price. And you've got to act fast because treatments typically take between four to six months to see the results. So the sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you're going to save. Folks, and you can find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors, and more than 100,000 men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. Treatment started just 10 bucks a month, and for a limited time, you can get your first month free. Brian, you know what they need to do. Go to Keeps.com, K-E-E-P-S, as in keeping your fucking hair. Keeps.com slash JCE first month free. What more can we do? I'm asking you, what more can we I do? Think can we're doing we do a any lot more? Here. I think should we do some more? I think this would be a wonderful gift for Road Warrior Skullet, whichever Nick Jackson, I guess it is, in the Young Bucks. Somebody should 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 sign him up. When it comes to his hair, he may not have the best comeback in the business, but he can hold on to what he has now. Because, you know, Peter Frampton, <laughs> you just can't take Peter I know Frampton where you're going serious already. anymore, can I know, you? I know where you're going. No, because <laughs> Peter Frampton, hell, I'd have fucked Peter Frampton in 1977. He was a gorgeous man, and his hair was beautiful and perfect. And now he looks, his head is the size of a pea. And he looks like a, a solicitor. Over in the UK somewhere. If only someone could have shown him the way. If somebody could have shown him the way to keeps his hair. 
poor peahead Peter Frampton now would, would still have the mane of a lion instead of the head of a little fucking pea if he didn't own about keeps. Now you're starting a feud of Peter Frampton. I'm not, I, you know, I enjoy his music, but he's got a tiny little fucking head and he looks, it, it, and also, you know, I, it's like the Lex Luger principle. You know, I'm, me and Luger standing next to each other in 1987 and I'm like, wow, boy, he's big and, you know, booming and I eat all this shit. And now I, through all the things that have happened, I'm actually better off physically than Lex Luger. Well, in 1977, I had the hair that I had and Peter Frampton had his hair and what majestic hair it was. And now I got more hair than Peter Frampton. Life sometimes is not fair, but sometimes it is.